Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group, where in this five part series, we're talking about our forgiving God. And today we want to look at the law and the prophets. And in Nehemiah nine, see the glory of God's grace when the people admit they're wrong. Father, thank you for this beautiful example of your redemption. Speak to our hearts, we pray in Jesus name. Amen. We've looked at Nehemiah chapter nine to to first off understand in our first part of this series that forgiveness starts with God. Forgiveness does not start with your failure. It starts with God's faithfulness. And because of his faithfulness, we can have the courage then, as we learned in part two of this series, to admit our wrong. We can confess. We can go to him and acknowledge our wrong and even go to others that we've hurt and acknowledge our wrong for the purpose, for the goal of victory. See, the whole idea of the prayer of forgiveness, the fact that we can pray this prayer, that's evidence of the possibility of victory. The prayer for forgiveness to be cleansed is truth to the fact that we can be clean. Think about it. We wouldn't ask to be cleaned or cleansed if we could not be clean. So the the reality of the things that we've done, the mistakes that we've made, yes, but that we can go to God. And we can find grace in our heavenly father through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. This opportunity for atonement means that we cannot just be at one, which is atonement, at one minute, but we can stay at one. Let's go to the Bible in Nehemiah chapter nine, verse 26. They say in their prayer to our heavenly father of mercy and love and grace. Nevertheless, they were disobedient. Speaking of their ancestors and rebelled against thee and cast thy law behind their backs. And they slew the prophets, which testified against them to turn to them rather, or to turn them to thee. And they wrought great provocations. What does it say? It says they cast the law behind their backs, but that didn't throw the law away. That doesn't mean that the law is not a reality. They just tried to do a bad magic trick and put it under a hat. But the rabbit was still there. And the beauty of this blunder is that if it was hidden behind their backs, guess what? It can be taken back from behind the back. It can be put into the light of day and it can be their future. It can be your reality. It doesn't matter how long we've tried to hide God's will in our lives. It doesn't change the the omnipotence. No, what word am I looking for? Yes, the omniscience, the all knowing of God, and it doesn't change the omnipotence or his all power to do what he's always known that he's wanted to do in your life, especially if we get advanced in age or if we do something that we think is so bad that there's no comeback from it. Those things don't phase him age or or the depth of the the depravity that don't that doesn't affect him. It only gives him more glory to make even brighter your victory. Verse 27 says, therefore, therefore means in light of everything that we just read before, you delivers them into the hand of their enemies who vets them. And in their time of trouble, after he let Israel go because they wanted to be let go of. But when they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven. And according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them saviors who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. These were the same people who destroyed the prophets. And after they had destroyed the prophets and the prophecies of hope that those prophets offered and they were put into a bad place, that same God sent them saviors. He sent them saviors who saved them out of the hand of the enemies that they chose to serve. We've got to understand that we have a God who says not only is victory possible, but it's promised. And it's not because of who they were. It says because of his mercies. It says because of who he is. That's why we say forgiveness doesn't start with the mistake that you made. Forgiveness starts with the faithfulness of God. So when you see it here played out in verse 28, it says, but after they had rest, so they had rest, they fell, God brings them back. They have a rest. They did evil again before thee. Therefore, what happens? 
He leftest thou them in the hand of their enemies so that they had the dominion over them. Yet, yet when they returned and cried unto thee, that's a confession we studied, the power of confession. He heard them from heaven and many times didst thou deliver them according to thy mercies. They were not delivered according to their askings. The Bible says it was according to his mercy. Let's not give ourselves too much credit and let's stop stealing from the Lord because he is the one who is the giver. He is the one who's the forgiver. It says here many times. Do you know how many times you've fallen? No, you may remember the last time you've fallen, but you don't know how many times he does because that many times that we've fallen, that's many times that he's forgiven. That's how many times he's been faithful. And on the basis of that, that is what will encourage us to have victory into our future. Be blessed and know that we serve a God who is forgiving, who is faithful, and who gives us the evidence of our victory by the fact that he offers it to us.